Our top focus at this hour, Afghanistan has called Pakistan and Iran's tensions alarming and has urged both parties to exercise restraint. This after Pakistan launched missile strikes into the Iranian territory, reportedly killing nine people, including four children. This was in retaliation to the Iranian strikes in Pakistan on Tuesday that killed two children and injured three others. Pakistan says its strikes hit terrorist hideouts around a city in Sistan, Baluchistan province. Earlier, Pakistan condemned Iran's strike on Tuesday in its Balochistan province near the Iranian border. Iran insisted that its strikes were aimed only at Jaysh al Adal, a group that has carried out attacks inside Iran and not Pakistan's citizens. Pakistan and Iran have long accused each other of harboring militant groups that carry out attacks from regions along their shared border. Pakistan's foreign ministry has confirmed Thursday's retaliatory strikes. Pakistan says it acted in light of credible intelligence of impending large-scale terrorist activities claiming that its attacks killed many terrorists. Iran, meanwhile, has summoned Pakistan's charge d'affaires after the missile strike. In light of these developments, Pakistan's caretaker Prime Minister Anwar ul Kakkar will cut short his trip to the World Economic Forum's annual meeting at Davos. The Foreign Minister of Pakistan, Jalil Abbas Jilani, is also cutting short his Uganda visit in light of these developments. China, a strong ally of both nations, has called them to show restraint and avoid escalation. Beijing also expressed willingness to play a constructive role in de-escalation if both sides want the same. Iran and Pakistan are close neighbors, friendly countries to China and countries with important influence. China sincerely hopes that both sides can maintain calm and restraint and avoid escalating tensions. If there is a need from both parties, we are also willing to play a constructive role in alleviating the situation. For more analysis and some on-ground updates, we are now being joined by Dr. Tawheed Asadi from Iran. He's a political analyst at the University of Tehran. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Asadi. I want Thank to start by asking you, I want to start by asking you about Pakistan's retaliatory strikes as they are being perceived. What is the security situation on ground in Iran right now? And can you confirm to us if civilians have been harmed? Uh, well, Tensions uh, are high at the moment between Iran and Pakistan, given the recent exchange of fire. But I think both countries have a common background in their fight against terrorism and actually a, a common interest uh, for cooperation in this fight. Uh, added to that is a mutual understanding and a bilateral consensus between Tehran and Islamabad on the exigency of uh, maintaining the security in the region, which requires collective action. But when it comes to the recent attacks, both countries just condemned each other. Uh, when it comes to the casualties, uh, reportedly Iran said that seven uh, people have been killed, uh, most of them children. And of course, Pakistan said almost a relatively similar argument regarding Iranian attack to Pakistani soil. The fact the Pakistani land. So we the fact is that I don't think at the time being, regardless of these high tensions, uh, the recent developments may result in a continued extensive confrontation between Iran and Pakistan. I'm sure that tensions are high. I'm sure that uh, for the next days there are going to be exchange of uh, a. Actually, and as we understand, the caretaker, right, uh, if I may come in, uh, the caretaker prime minister of Pakistan has cut short his trip uh, at Davos, as has a foreign minister. Uh, will we see these tensions de-escalate in the coming few days? Uh, well, it cannot be taken for granted, by my, but my estimation at the time being is that the two countries both have... Uh, have tried and have said that they're trying to de-escalate the situation. If you look at the statements, they both said that they respect the sovereignty of each other and the targeted bases are related to some terrorist groups located both in Pakistan and Pakistani side says that uh, it has attacked the uh, terrorist groups based in Iran. So all in all, it means that the two countries 
uh, are not fighting against each other's army or the official, let's say, uh, military forces. Rather, they are trying to uh, to express this red line to each other that if national security of each country is under jeopardy or threatened, they're going to have a zero uh, tolerance policy pertaining to such kind of actions. I think the bigger picture in which we are located is not just related to this confrontation, but also related to the ongoing war that Israelis have started against Gaza, and they are trying to drag this war into a broader context. Right. So with that respect, I think the sponsorship that they are providing to terrorist groups could escalate the situation. Uh, so just my just to follow up to that, do you see this current uh, row between Pakistan and Iran uh, evolving into a bigger regional conflict? Is that a possibility at this point, given that Pakistan has retaliated now? Well, I think uh, tensions, as I told for several times, are high, but my estimation is that it's going to be de-escalated in a couple of weeks, if not days. So if we consider the common interest, the common background, and the shared value that they have in the security of the region, I don't think it's going to end up in a bigger uh, escalation or bigger, bigger confrontation between the two countries. The big problem between the two countries is not the policies taken by to run against Islamabad, but the fact that uh, terrorist groups are misusing the tensious situation in order to attack the lands, attack the uh, civilians of the two countries, and that is a situation about which neither is happy. Right. Uh, Dr. Asadi, thank you so much for your insights and thanks for joining us on Beyond at this hour. Thanks for having me. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.